first two sessions, first two, se yeah, yeah, you'd say first two sessions. Our first session this morning, we talked about the interface of AutoCAD, the application menu. We use the application menu to um, uh, set the units of our drawing, the quick access toolbar. I, I tend to use the quick access toolbar much more frequently to uh, open drawings, save drawings, and then the, the save as and the open tools on the application menu. We looked at the ribbon. We haven't really used the ribbon too much yet, but we did launch the layer property uh, dialog box or layer property palette um, from the ribbon. On the status bar, we have the uh, model and layout tabs down in the status bar that we use to switch from uh, model space to layout one and layout two, just to compare those two work working environments. Uh, on the status bar, you also have um, uh, we haven't used too much down there yet, but we, we'll begin to. But uh, this, the grid icon, I enabled the grid display on the status bar and so forth. So I think your major features on the status bar would be the model, model and layout tabs um, and your, your drafting toggles that many of these are enabled uh, by default, but we'll begin to uh, work with them in earnest uh, very shortly here. Um, we talked about help, you know, how to access help. I, hovering over an icon um, whose command you wish to use. Um, hover, press F1, and it will launch you to that specific topic for uh, in help. And uh, indicated that with help, if you do not have an active internet connection, you will not, will not have access to help, so you'll need to download it and install it on the machine. Um, if you're not a big help user, you, you won't miss it if you don't have it. Uh, the display commands were pan and zoom. Um, the mouse wheel is the easiest way to pan and zoom your drawing. If I want to zoom in on something, um, if, if I were in AutoCAD and I wanted to zoom in on these stairs, I could point my crosshairs at that set of stairs, roll the wheel forward, and that would zoom me in uh, so I'm seeing those um, stairs more clearly. Uh, if I roll the wheel backward, it zooms me out. Push and hold the wheel, that's pan, and if I double click the wheel, that zoom extends. And then we created and saved our first drawing um, with the drawing setup dialog box. We just created a drawing using the wizard. And in that drawing, we set the units to be architectural. We set the drawing limits to be 50 feet in the horizontal, 50 feet in the vertical. And then we talked about units and drawing limits. We set our units to be, or we double checked our units with the um, application menu, drawing utilities, units option. And we'll do that more than once. That's something, it's, it's a good activity to repeat just to sort of reinforce that skill and we've got to the point where we've talked about the functionality of layers uh, layer properties but we have not yet created layers uh, I may have created one uh, you may not have created any so my layer manager is still open in AutoCAD we'll we'll come back to um, the layer manager in a second let me just do this do this I have to uh, launch a knowledge check from the morning session um, it's a pretty simple little quiz. I'm just going to find it. And I think it's got two questions in it. So I'm going to open this up. I'll find day one morning. I'm going to launch this quiz and just answer the questions as best you can. And we'll move on from there. Really? The test is blank. That's funny. It's not funny, but um, let me close this. And I wonder if I can relaunch it. If it's closed, I may not be able to relaunch it, but yours, oh, Terrence, okay, yours worked. Okay. Uh, okay. So I'll tell you what. I'll just kind of review this. These are, I didn't know you could even do this to show this on screen. Can, is my screen showing? Okay. Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, you just never know. My screen is showing, though. So uh, the the test looks like this, Matt. It's it's not 
it's not super tough. And I try to, I actually have to re remind myself of what these things are. So I kind of hit the topic um, with some force um, when we're talking about it. But the model and layout tabs are located on the ribbon. Um, actually, the answer is, uh, sorry about that. Uh, I, I can kind of see your score there, um, Terrence. But actually, the model and layout tabs are on the, on the status bar. If I come to AutoCAD, and I'm looking, that's kind of cool, you can kind of keep that. So here's your model tab. It, it'll look better in our residential drawing, I think. If I come to residential, here's model, layout one, and layout two. So the model and layout tabs are on the status bar. And then it says if your computer does not have internet connection, you cannot access. Um, yeah, there you go. Yeah, and I know it's it, there's so many tabs and stuff, it's, it's fine. Really, this is not a test of your knowledge. It's a test of my ability to communicate, to make sure I'm like getting the stuff out there. Um, so the, and it says if your computer does not have internet access, um, you will not have access to help. Or did I read that right? If your computer does not have internet access, an internet connection, you cannot access help in, in AutoCAD 2017 or 2019 or whatever. So that should be updated, but it is true. Um, the, the answer is true. Oh, wait, if the correct answer is true. So um, I'll punch out of that now and um, and there'll be another one coming this afternoon. They're they're pretty basic, uh, but it, but it, they're it's it, they are one of several basic things. I think, uh, Terrence, you had said it's a it's a lot of information, and um, right. I think you said uh, it is a lot. You know, it's it's a lot to, for for it's a lot to cram in the two days. That's for sure. So, but but the um, the uh, uh, videos I hope will help. Sort of reinforce the skills that you're that you're picking up here, and, um, and and certainly just using the software, using the software with other users and that sort of thing makes your job a little bit easier. So um, I am always so sleepy after lunch, and I didn't even have that big of a lunch, but I'm just trying to get myself woken up. A little bit of coffee there. So before the break, we were in the bedroom manual drawing, and this drawing had a. Uh, just a, a handful of layers. Didn't have a lot of layers. A anno dims the dimension layer. A anno note. I added that layer. Um, a a wall. That was the uh, the layer for walls. And um, I sort of showed you the functionality of layers. Layers allow you to impose color property, line type property, line weight property, and even printing property on your on the objects that are in your drawing. Plus having your uh, Layers having layers to support your design groups allow you to sort of selectively dismiss or, or hide. Like a anno dims, if I don't want to see that layer, the objects on that layer, I can turn that layer off. And again, it's a little bit awkward because I'm turning off the current layer. If I had set a different layer current, like I'll set layer zero as the current layer. And, and I'm just using this control window. This window allows me to open up, see what layers are present, and click the name of the layer that I want to be current. And I'm going to just click on layer 0. And then with layer 0 as the current layer, I'll just click on A anno dims the light bulb, and I've turned that layer off. So that layer no longer shows on screen, and it will not print on paper. So creating your layers um, is not that tough. It's just one little button on uh, the layer property manager that it looks like a stack of paper layers uh, the, the layer objects in AutoCAD mimic the tracing paper that we used to lay over or overlay on um, a drawn floor plan and we would draw our discipline specific stuff like fire suppression fire alarm or you know what what have you so this first button has a little sparkle on it indicating that it's a new layer well, this drawing, bedroom manual, does not need any layers, but my residential drawing does need some layers. So I'm going to create some layers in this drawing, and um, if you're following along, you can too. Now, if I recall from before the break, I copied a. Is that what I copied? No, that's not. No, that's not it. I'm going to find um, back in the book on page 17. I'm going to copy this layer list and I'm not going to create all of these you don't have to create all of these just to get a feel for what it's like to create layers I'll do a control V and I'll zoom out and I'll paste 
something like that. This is called an OLE, which you probably saw OLE in the bedroom manual drawing. OLE is outside linked and embedded file or something like that, or some something that's not really native to AutoCAD has been added to AutoCAD. So the layers that, that we will need or will want to use in this drawing are, I'll use my little highlighter. In fact, I'll use the highlighter, to, I'll use the pen to scratch out the ones that we don't need in this drawing. I'll go pen. So we need a anno dims, we need a anno note, we need a anno TTLB, a door, a glaze. We we could have a mill up. We won't need a roof. A wall pad. Oops, that's messy. I'm just gonna undo that for a second. I, I don't have the, the the same control I'd like to have with this, but so we'll get rid of a roof. A little better. A wall pad. We don't need. We really don't need GNO view or. So these three we don't really need. So with those crossed out, I'll sort of, whoop, this thing is hard to control. Uh, what if I do this? Yeah, if I hold my shift key down, I can have a little bit more control with it. All right, so that leaves anno dims one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, like seven layers that we really need. And most of the layers are layer name and layer color. One of them has a different line type. I think it would be beneficial to, to create that one with a different line type. So I'm gonna create some layers and then you can follow along if you want to uh, with your drawing. I'm clicking the new layer button in the layer property manager. I'll go ahead and click new layer. And again, I kind of mentioned, there's no need for me to mention this, but you're not really creating a new layer. You're copying whatever layer was highlighted at the time that button was clicked. And in this case, I only have layer zero in my residential drawing. So I've copied layer zero and I can't call it layer zero. The layer manager only allows you to have one layer with a specific name. So you have to every, layer has to have a unique name. So I'm going to name this one A hyphen A N N O hyphen D I M S. And then if I left click away from that text window, that name window, it closes the, the name dialog box and then I'll choose the color for that layer. So I'll click the either the white square or the the word white. I'll left click on that. And here I'll type in the color number 211, 211, and I'll hit OK, and it's kind of a pinky purple, and that layer is done. I'll go new, A hyphen A N N O, that's not an O, O hyphen uh, N O T E, note. Left click the color swatch, 231, OK, new layer, A hyphen A N N O hyphen T T L B. So, so far we have three annotation architectural layers, architectural annotation dimensions, architectural annotation notes, architectural annotation title block. Uh, the title block layer is for the border. Some people will call a border, a drawing border, a title block or a border. And I'm gonna put that uh, border in layout space on a white background. So I'm gonna, I don't want, I really wanna have a bold color. Um, so this is gonna sound weird. I'm gonna choose the color seven or white. The color seven or the color white is white in model space, but it's black in layout space because it, layout space expects to be a white background. So white is actually a very bold color in layout space. Um, new layer, A hyphen door, that's the door layer. That's color 31. New layer, A hyphen G L A Z. That's a glaze layer. That is the window layer. Glazing is a category of building material in in your construction spec. And so there, I don't know why they don't call it a wind for your windows, but um, glazing is kind of a catch-all. It could be skylights. It could be uh, windows, storefronts, anything that is sort of glass related or glazing related. 
and the A glaze layer is 151. I'll hit OK. New layer. This is A hyphen M I L L hyphen U P. That's architectural millwork up above the cut plane. I'll make that color 51. So in, in a drawing like bedroom manual, there's a cut plane, like an imaginary saw passes through the floor plan and cuts that floor plan in half. And that saw passes traditionally at three feet six inches above the floor. And anything at or below three feet six is drawn with a solid, continuous, unbroken line, signifying to the reader that is that the things that you see here are visible to the naked eye. So anything above that would be drawn with a different line type. The A-mill up layer, I haven't created it yet, the A-mill up layer is the shelf layer, architectural millwork up above the cut plane. That layer will have a, uh, a dashed line type. I guess I have created it. A-mill up, color 51, I'm going to use a line type called hidden. I'll left click on the word continuous under line type, and this particular drawing only has one line type. It only has continuous. So if I want additional line types, I've got to click load. So I'll click load and I'll go find hidden. So these are alphabetically and alphanumerically sorted. So I'll find the H's. Here's hidden. I'll left click hidden. Left click OK. So to this point I've just loaded that line type. It's not, I haven't set that line type yet for my a mail up layer but I'll select hidden in this this original dialog box I'll select it here and then hit OK and now my line type is set to hidden so there we have it um, I've created uh, a layer that has a, a, a sort of a custom or a predefined uh, layer color and a line type and then that leaves behind the layer a wall I'll click new layer. Now when you do this you have to be careful because I told you that the new that new layer button doesn't really create a new layer it copies the last layer. So my A hyphen W A L L layer should not be color 51 it should be color 113 and these colors are not written in stone. These are usually different, they vary by office. If you had two offices on the same street in Washington DC and they both used AutoCAD, they used the same exact layer names for their drawings, they even did the same drawings, these colors would probably not be the same. These are not governed by any standard. They are up for the user or the, or the group of users to choose. So I changed, I created a layer called A wall. The color is 113. The line type is hidden in this example because I copied a mill up, but a wall layer should not be a hidden line type. It should be a continuous line type. So I'll select, uh, no I won't, I'll select hidden on the a wall layer. I'll select hidden, then click the continuous line type, click OK, and there I have it. I've created these um, seven layers. Actually I've created, yeah, seven. There's eight total. I didn't create layer zero. Layer zero is already here. So I've just created those, those seven layers. And I'm just scrolling down to make sure I... Gotcha, gotcha. So um, I was just checking to make sure there weren't any, any other uh, chats that I was missing. I'm going to erase the, the little pen markings. I'll, I'll wait if you need another minute to create layers. And as, you're, as we're plugging along, this is a practice drawing, right? This isn't, this isn't, won't make or break us. It's a practice drawing. It has eight layers, including layer zero. My guess is once you go on to use AutoCAD, you'll never work in a drawing with this few layers again. It's probably not grammatically well spoken, but, um, the, you know, Terrence is working on sprinkler drawings. Um, you know, you're going to have walls, doors, windows, text, dimensions, maybe dimensions. Certainly then every artifact or every um, object that comes along with a sprinkler system, that's going to at least double the number of layers. And I'm going to say you're going to have five to ten times more layers in your drawing. And then, Matt, if you're, if you're doing civil work, I mean, there's so many things that can pass through a civil drawing. 
you'll have maybe 10 more times, uh, 10 times more layers than, than this seven, it might be 70, it could be 170, it could be, you know, de depending on how complex the drawings are, the, the more drawings you'll have, I mean, the more layers you'll have. So the layer property manager, we use this to create layers, A anno dims through A wall, and to assign properties to those layers like color, line type. You notice I, I didn't assign line weight. I, that's just a personal preference. I don't assign line weight and so forth. There's additional properties that we can in, uh, interface with. We don't have to right now. So step one was to create these layers. Step two of this exercise is to set a wall as the current layer. And there's just several ways you can do this. One is with the layer A wall selected, we can click this green check mark. It's really hard to see that, at least it is for me, it's hard to see that that button is a green check mark. But the, the button is called set current. The tooltip tells us that. And if I left click on, on that button, it moves the green check mark that was next to layer zero. It put it on the same row as A wall. Then the layer property manager says the current layer is A wall. And in the layer control window, A wall is showing as the current layer. So if somebody really wants us to know what, the, what layer is current you know, at, at all times. So I've just dismissed all of the little pen markings I put on this OLE. I now dismiss the OLE and questions on anything, questions at all. Okay, I'm gonna save the drawing. So I've done a little work here. I've just, let's see if that is. Yeah, um, yeah, so Terrence says, you got it. Um, it looks complicated at first, but it really is, it is pretty simple. The actual mechanics are not complicated. It, it, it's a, there's a lot of moving parts, you know, it's like, okay, you've got a layer manager, I've got to create layers, and, and um, a lot of the things that we do on, in the first few hours of the first day are things like this. We create a drawing, we set the units to be whatever we prefer, set the drawing limits, create layers, but these are all things that would be really nice to have in a company template so we're not doing setup the first hour two hours it wouldn't take that long once you're once you're comfortable with AutoCAD you can set up a drawing in minutes but you might like you might create a, a drawing called you know drawing A and A and O dims layer is 211 in that drawing then create another drawing called drawing B and A and O dims is 213 it wouldn't be a big deal but it would be slightly different and so you just Saving this drawing as a template will save us a ton of time. I am going to hit the X on the layer property manager. That will close it. However, I could put it on a second screen. I do have two monitors going. I could put it on a second monitor if I wanted to. But in this case, I'll close out of it. And let's say I, I'm going to hit save right now. There's never a bad time to save. And in fact, some of the best times to save are just after you've created some new content. So I created a bunch of layers, you created a bunch of layers. We don't want to recreate those things. We're, we're hopefully going to reuse these and, and have access to them as our time goes by. So that's your layer. Um, you know, you're creating layers and the layer functionality. Let's move forward. I'll come into back to publisher and I'm going to skip into page 18, page 19 and again with the, the, the PowerPoint, I will upload the PowerPoint to the uh, materials area. Um, we've done everything in day one, part two, with the exception of this basic draw command practice. So we'll talk about basic draw commands, line, circle, and arc. So I'll switch into um, AutoCAD. I shut it down? Oh, there it is. I'm, I am tired. I'm, I shouldn't I have no reason to be this tired, but I just get so sleepy after lunchtime. So back in the residential drawing, I have some basic draw commands that I can show you. I'm going to highlight the, the panel that they're on. And I'll sort of, you know, like we're not going to do polyline right now. We're not going to do any of those right now. So our three basic draw commands are line, circle, and arc. 
And while they create three different shapes, they the feel is the same. It's one click, two click, and you've got the beginnings, or maybe you've got the entire you know piece of line. I'll start with the line command, and this this is a theme you'll see if you you know, watch how I do things. I, I try to do things the same way every time, so it sort of locks in. It's sort of repetitive, in a good way or a bad way. I, you know, you decide. But I'm going to click my command. I'll left click line, and I'll move my my uh, my pointer into my drawing window. So the command didn't start. So I'm going to go back and click it again. Click line. That this time it started. So whenever I start a command, I try to move my crosshairs into the drawing window as soon as possible. I immediately move them into the drawing window because at my crosshairs by default there's a little prompting. That prompting says specify first point. The command line says line specify first point. So I don't really need to know what command I'm in because I, I started the command. Sometimes it's good to know because you might hit the wrong button. I, I myself still do it. But the command prompt says specify first point. I'm just going to use a, a left click. I'll left click wherever. Left click. AutoCAD keeps an endpoint of that line where I left clicked and then I've got this rubber band line attaching to my my crosshairs. I'm going to excuse me sneeze. I had to sneeze there. Um, I'm going to move my mouse to my next point and I'll left click. Left click. Then I'll move to the next point and left click. So this is a continuous command in AutoCAD. Your line command is and it will just keep on going until you stop the command and there's a couple ways to stop it. One way is I can hit escape. Escape is cancel in AutoCAD or on the command line I can left click the word close and what close does is it'll close this shape. It takes me back to my start point and ends the command. So that's a that's a closed shape. It's not really but it, AutoCAD would, re, would refer to it as a closed shape. So that's four lines. I've got one, two, three, four lines, and I'm between commands now. So if I wanted to draw more lines, I could restart the command. Now I could just go up to line. I'll go line. There we go. And I've started the command. Again, I move the crosshairs into the drawing window. Specify first point. I'll just kind of left click and move. All right, this, there's some things that are, that are working here, like dynamic input is a tool that's on by default in your AutoCAD. And what dynamic input is telling me above the line that I'm drawing, it's telling me that I've moved one foot five inches from my first point. And then all the way to the right hand side is an angle. I'm currently moving at zero degrees. And then at the bottom right corner of my crosshairs, it says polar one foot five angle zero degrees. So it's kind of reinforcing that. Polar tracking is something that's on by default. It's this circle with two lines coming out of it. We cover this later today, but in most installation of AutoCAD, that is on by default. Just wherever they make AutoCAD and they, they have settings that are configured at the time of um, install, that's one of the things that's on by default. So what that polar tracking is helping me do is draw draw a horizontal, draw vertically, I'm just going straight down. It puts a little laser beam at my crosshair. If I'm on zero, if I'm on an angle divisible at by 90 degrees, you'll see a um, the laser beam. If I, right now I'm pointing at 130 degrees, no laser beam. At 180, you see the laser beam. All right, whatever this angle is right now, 151, no laser beam. But it, and they don't really call it a laser beam. That's just that's my term for it. That's actually a, called a tracking vector. And that dotted green line shooting off into infinity is a tracking vector. So I'm using polar tracking to draw at these vertical and horizontals, more or less. And when I'm done, I'll hit escape. Escape is cancel in AutoCAD. One more thing I want to show you with regards to line is just to the left of that circle with the two lines, just to the left of polar, is something called ortho mode. The symbol for ortho mode looks like, if you've seen this, it's like your universal right angle symbol. It looks like this.
that's close. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's you know, right here. It's one, two, three, four icons from the left. I'm going to left click on the status bar. I'll left click on that ortho icon. And then really what it does, it does the exact same thing I did here. It forces me to draw at horizontals and vertical. Polar tracking helps me draw at verticals and horizontals. Ortho forces me. So if I go ortho again, I'll go ortho, left click, I move down the screen. This is a vertical line. The tooltip says ortho, distance I've traveled, and an angle of 270. Left click, I'll move right. Ortho, five and a half inches, angle of zero. Left click. So this, this is really puts a lot of control on the line, uh, or actually on my cursor, as I draw a line, it really forces me. I can't draw at angles other than 0 and 90 unless I use some other means. But with ortho on, it forces you to draw. Like Etch-a-Sketch, if, if you had an Etch-a-Sketch when you were a kid, left knob was up and down, right knob was left and right, or I'm not even sure if that's right, but you know, one knob controlled up and down, and the other knob controlled left and, uh, left and right. So that's what ortho does. Once I'm done drawing, again, if I want to get back into the command, I can, I can go back to the ribbon, click the button, or I can right-click my mouse and repeat line. So whatever command you use last, you can repeat it by right-clicking and choosing repeat last command, repeat whatever the last command was from the, from the right-click menu. I'll hit escape when I'm done. So that's the line command. So, cool, got it, all right, good deal. Just kind of an FYI, the line command creates individual line objects. Even though I created all of these lines at the same time, they're not, it's not one object. Each one of these is, is an independent thing. I can select a couple of these, I'll get these vertical lines, left click, left click, and then I'll hit erase. It took out the selected sections, but not the other points. So the line command does not create a, a continual linear object that creates a series of what Autodesk refers to as contiguous linear segments. That's, contiguous is not a word I use very often, except for you know day one of AutoCAD. Uh, but here it says line command. With line, you can create a series of contiguous line segments. E each line segment is a line object that can be edited separately. And that is true. I can select one part and delete one part of that line, select another part, delete. You know, it has no effect on the neighboring, except it may look funny where the other lines are gone. If I have a change of heart, I can use the undo button and bring back those tools, bring back those erased lines. Okay, so that's the line command. That's a pretty basic, it really is a basic draw command. I mean, it's, it, that's what it says in the book, but it really is. It's, it's very basic. It, there's not a lot to it. It's start the command, one left click, two left click, you've got a line. Now, springboarding off of that, our next basic draw command is the circle command, and circle defaults to this center radius um, creation mode or method. If I start circle, the first thing the command prompt says at the dynamic input, again, I'm moving the crosshairs into the drawing window, specify center. Wherever I left click right now, I'll left click. That's the center of that circle. As I move, AutoCAD is measuring the distance to my next point. That'll become the radius when I left click again, left click. So just like line, line was two clicks, one left click, two left click, there's a line. With circle, same thing, it's one left click, two left click, I've got a circle. I don't have to make two clicks, I can make one left click and then type in my value like three feet enter. That was a really big circle, it's, it's out of my line of sight. So my drawing window right now is kind of small. 
circle, left click, six, enter. That's a six inch radius circle. Circle, and this is not a continuous command. Where line was continuous, I have to keep restarting circle. Left click, 0.5, enter. Circle, left click, 0.5, enter. I kind of botched that, so I'm gonna undo that. Circle, left click, 0.5, enter. Like so. Let's give that a try if you haven't already. The circle command, pretty easy to use. Hand, very handy though, good for, you know, you'll, you'll use circles a lot in your drawings. Um, so as you're plugging along, so let's call your attention to something here that when I select a line, the line that I select sort of signifies that it is selected by going dotted or dashed and it puts these blue squares at regular intervals. Really the blue squares are at the end points and at the middle. Blue squares are called grips. They can be used for simple edits, like stretch and move. Circle, if I click a circle, it has five grips. Four quadrant grips and one center grips. One center grip. So similar to the line, the midpoint grip on a line is for move. The center point grip on a circle is move. End point grip on a line is change length, make it longer or shorter, whatever you like. And the quadrant grip on a circle is change radius. There are other ways, maybe even more accurate ways to edit your objects, but this is a good way to see what selected line work looks like. It's just, it kind of it makes itself look different than unselected line work on purpose. So, questions on anything, circle, line, what have you. Cool, all right. So, the circle command has a little arrow underneath it, a little arrow, a little triangle. The triangle, whenever you see that, the, the technical name for the triangle is disclosure button. If you click on the disclosure button, it will usually show you, basically it's a menu or a drop down uh, or fly out, you know, a fly out button. There's multiple ways to draw circles. Center radius, center diameter, two points, three points, tangent, tangent radius, tangent, tangent, tangent. You know, you can pick and choose the method you want to use based on the situation you're, you're drawing in. Um, let's see how this works. I'll go open this up and go tangent, tangent, tangent. So there's three lines here in pretty close proximity. Well, let's use these guys. I'll left click that line. You see a little icon at my crosshairs. Left click, left click. That icon is a tangent icon, and I've made this circle touch three different lines on three different sides. I'll go circle, uh, tangent, tangent, tangent again. Left click this vertical line, left click this horizontal line, horizontal line below it, boom. So there's a couple different, usually your draw tools will show you a couple different ways to, to achieve the same end 
like center radius or tan tan tangent, these different tools all just create circles, but they would allow you to leverage local line work. Like if I want my circle to be in contact with three points, I would use tangent, tangent, tangent. If I wanted my circle to be sitting at the midpoint of a line with its uh, radius on the end of that line, I would use center radius. You know, if I, if I need a circle with a 42 inch diameter, I'll use center diameter. Um, so that these just allow you, you know, if you've got an object like a circle that has multiple ways it can be drawn or multiple components that make it up, like a circle has a radius, has a diameter, has a center point, can make contact with two points or three points, can make contact in a tangent fashion. So, it, so AutoCAD gives you these different methods of drawing circles. The line command does not have a disclosure button. Line is about as plain vanilla as you can get in AutoCAD. You can just you can draw a line, left down, up right, you know, one click, two click. All right, let's do one more basic draw command. This will be the arc command. And um, I'm going to turn ortho mode off for this. Ortho is really great for drawing straight horizontal, straight vertical lines, but it really does create a little bit of havoc when you're trying to draw an arc. So I'll, I'll click on ortho mode to turn that off on the status bar. Then I'll click arc on the draw panel. And I'm just going to click in three points. Like I'm just going to vary the elevation of my crosshairs. I'll do one click up high, one click down low, one more click up high, opposite the other one, and I've made this smiley face, big broad smile. Um, I'll go back to that arc. It's not continuous by default. I'll go one left click, two left click, three left click. Now there's a crazy laughing face on my screen. So the arc command is kind of like line in that you create an arc. It's an individual object. I've got two arcs here that were created at separate times. I can delete one. It'll leave the other behind most likely. So they are, they are independent objects. Okay, so really, the line command was the only line I needed, uh, only command I needed to use the escape tool, the escape button, to cancel. Arc and circle, they have a, a definitive endpoint. They, the command ends, you know, so I don't need to end that command. But, but with some commands, you'll see a number of commands, probably half as many commands, um, need to be stopped somehow. Um, one way, probably the most common way is to hit escape. Escape is cancel in AutoCAD. And then maybe you can see this on my command line. Whatever command I was just in, it now says cancel. There's um, asterisk, cancel, asterisk. So AutoCAD interprets escape as cancel. So arc has a disclosure button just like circle has. And if I open up the arc menu, if you will, you'll see there's like 10 different ways to draw arcs. Um, based on the components of an arc, like endpoints and centers, angles and lengths, directions, and, and so forth. So there's a, probably a way for every drawing you'll ever work in to create your arc that'll, that will work for you. Questions on any of those basic draw commands? Questions at all? Cool. Okay. I'm going to clear off all this highlighter stuff. There we go. I'm going to save this drawing. Cool, 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 cool. I'm going to save the drawing. And 
coming back to the PowerPoint, we've completed all the day one, part one, part two stuff. Now we're in a day one, part three, which this represents on this slide represents 90 minutes. We've been going for about 45. And this is, this is, is really is not 90 minutes worth of stuff here. Um, two drawings we're gonna create, two separate drawings we're gonna create. One will be a window and one will be a door. And we'll use slightly, um, slightly similar approaches to creating these, but with a couple different accessory tools. Um, the window will snap in to the window opening that's three feet wide, and the door will snap, snap in, snap in to these two foot six inch openings. So the window and door are slightly different sizes, and there's slightly different techniques we'll use to create them. So um, departing page 18 and page 19, we'll go to page 20, page 21. And I'll say, I'll be the first to tell you that a lot of the information on page 20, page 20 is, is kind of obsolete based on some of the changes, some of the additions that have been made in AutoCAD. Some of the stuff you still can do, like you can, I'm gonna zoom in, we can enter coordinates uh, like absolute Cartesian coordinates and, and so forth. This, the weird thing about coordinates is, you, well, first of all, you probably won't do a lot of it, though, Matt, you might do some coordinate entry. And I think with civil people, the, the accuracy that's required in civil engineering, civil design, will often require some sort of coordinate entry. Floor plan design, not as much, I, I don't think, but I could be wrong. I, you know what I imagine is if someone used AutoCAD, to program like an automotive assembly robot, you know those robots that spin their hands around, and they move doors and all that stuff. You know, someone would have to program that robot with coordinates like X, Y, Z. You know, horizontal, vertical, um, and then you know, really vertical, like uh, you know, 3D points to assemble a, a, a car. Probably more than 3D, and, I, and there could be you know, time is in there too. We used to have to use coordinates a lot in AutoCAD. Well, here's what I want to do. Um, I'm going to come into AutoCAD. I'm going to save the residential drawing, and you can too. We'll just click Save. And saving, you know, I'm not so much saving this happy face. I'm not saving my Etch-a-Sketch stairs. I'm saving my layers. I'm saving my drawing uh, units and I'm saving my drawing limits. Now I want to save those things. So then I'll click click new. Clicking new on the command line. Not on the command line. On the quick access toolbar. Sorry, I am a little tired. So on the quick access toolbar, I'll click new and it brings up the create new drawing dialog box. These two drawings that we're going to draw separately are fairly basic and we can start them from scratch. We'll use the start from scratch option. We'll use the sub option as imperial feet and inches, and then we'll hit OK. So here I am in this new blank drawing. I'm going to turn my grid on. The grid allows me the ability to see if I'm panning and zooming, if, if I'm having, if that, those commands are working. And then I'll just sort of double click the mouse wheel, and that just zooms me out as far as I can go. So in this drawing, let me demonstrate something. Don't just just watch this. Don't feel like you have to do it with me. Um, I want to show you how coordinate entry works. I'm going to draw a, a rectangle that's eight inches in the horizontal, four inches in the vertical, using the line command, and then I'll undo it. I just want you to see how this works and kind of what a pain in the neck it is. Um, the coordinates do not function as they did in early AutoCAD with dynamic input on. Dynamic input is this specify opposite corner and those two windows with those numbers in them. I'm going to turn mine off. Don't turn yours off. Leave yours on. I'm going to turn mine off by hitting F12. And it's not dramatic. You can't see a confirmation that it was turned off, but I'm no longer seeing my command prompt at my, um, my crosshairs. Now using the line command, I'll go line, and I'm gonna draw this rectangle using absolute Cartesian coordinates. I wanna start at the coordinate zero, 
comma, zero. And you can't see anything at my crosshairs, but on the command line, you can say, see line, specify first point, zero comma zero. When I hit enter, it attaches my crosshairs to the UCS icon, the user coordinate system icon, with this rubber band line. This is a future line. It's what it's, it's anchored on one end so far only. Now I'll anchor it on the other end by typing in the coordinate eight comma four. So eight comma four is eight in the X for, uh, excuse me, I want eight comma zero. Eight comma zero is my next coordinate. So it's eight in the X, zero in the Y. I'll hit enter and I'll hit enter harder. There we go, I, hit, hit, I missed enter. So there's a straight horizontal line. It's eight inches long, starts at zero X and zero Y, ends at eight X and zero Y. Now I'll go four up the screen. So I'll do a coordinate of eight comma four, enter, and there's that vertical line. Now I'll go back to my start point, zero in the X, comma, four in the Y. I'll hit enter, it takes me back to my start point. And then finally, I'll go back to that zero comma zero, enter, and there's my rectangle right there. So at some point in the history of AutoCAD, that was, that was the height of technology. You had to type your X's and your Y's and I'm sure with practice, anyone could get really good, really fast, really efficient with that method. Um, this, the software has been develop, developed to the point where we don't really need to do this anymore. So I'm gonna erase everything. I'll just do a Control A to select everything, and then I'll delete everything. Now, the one coordinate that we do really have to use with some frequency is that zero X and zero Y coordinate. So now, this part, if you're doing some hands-on stuff, do this part with me. Make sure you've got a new drawing created. Mine's called Drawing 4. Yours might be Drawing 3 or Drawing 2, whatever. We'll have a new drawing created. We can keep the units at decimal, right? Because these are small numbers. Our, the biggest number here is 36 for our window drawing. I'll go to This, this is the drawing we're going to create right here. I'm going to, I'm going to copy it and I'll paste it in, in the, the drawing. Right, so I'll just go ahead and control V to paste. Well, I won't paste it yet. So we will use two techniques to draw this window. One is the absolute Cartesian coordinate of zero, zero. And you can see that right here. There's your zero, zero at the left side of the, excuse me, the midpoint of the left vertical line is at zero, zero, and then we're sort of drawing away from there. And the technique that you see here, this 2.5, 36, 5, 36, 2.5, and then you can't, I don't have another 36 there. This is called direct distance entry. I'm gonna draw that same rectangle with direct distance entry. I'll, again, I'll use the absolute Cartesian coordinate zero comma zero. I'm gonna turn ortho back on and I'll turn dynamic input back on. So here's what it looks like. I'll go line and I'm, I'm sort of right of my, um, let me do this, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go above my UCS icon because that's how that window is drawn, it's sort of going up and right. So specify first point, zero comma zero enter. There's my first line and because ortho mode is on it's keeping me straight vertical. Now how long do I want this line to be? Well that rectangle was 8 by 4 so I'll do a 4. I want this line to be 4, enter. Now I'll move my mouse to the right and that line will start to follow me. As I move to the right I'll type the number 8 and hit enter. Right and I'll come to the end of that line, pull down the screen, four, enter, left on the screen, eight, enter, and then I'll hit escape to cancel. So that's the same, if I had that first rectangle on screen, well, they'd be overlapping right now, but there's no difference between the first one and the second one. Just the first one I used absolute Cartesian coordinates to draw the whole thing. Direct distance entry, if I want to, a 10 inch long line, I left click my line uh, line button, left click a start point, point in my desired direction, type the number 10 and hit enter. That's a, that's a perfectly you know, horizontal 10 inch long line. 
So direct distance entry is a much more convenient way to create uh, drawings with accuracy. Control A, delete. So now I want to create this window. And I've got to make a change to my AutoCAD. This window is 36 at its widest point. The drawing limits in the drawing I'm in are 12 inches at the widest. So I've got to change the limits. That'll be step one. This is the only command I like to click the command line first. I'll left click the command line and type limits. L-I-M-I-T-S. Limits. Enter. Now, I have no doubt you know how to spell limits. I have doubts in my ability to speak. So when I say limits, I'm not entirely sure you know what I'm saying, so I, say, I spell it out, limits. You type limits and you hit enter, the command line says specify lower left corner or, and it shows you in brackets 0 0.0000, comma, 0 0.0000. And if I paraphrase that, it's just saying right now the lower left corner is at 0x and 0y. I'm going to hit enter to accept that. Enter. Now it says specify upper right corner and it's showing me 12 comma 9 in brackets. That means the upper right corner is 12 in the X, 9 in the Y. Well my window is 36 at its widest. So I'm going to, and it's 36 at the X, so I'm going to make the X 36. And for the hell of it, I'm just going to go comma 36. I'll just make it symmetrical so I don't have to use my imagination and think up a second number. So 36 comma 36 and then I'll hit enter. So I've told AutoCAD that there's more to life than 12 comma 9. There's 36 comma 36 but my drawing screen still doesn't equal that 36 comma 36, 36 comma 36 excuse me. I'm gonna have to zoom to it. I'm gonna double click my mouse wheel. Click click. Right? When you double click your mouse wheel what happens is that grid, if you have the grid turned on, it will change. It will, in this case, it got really dense. You can see if I undo that zoom, there's a fair amount of space inside of these squares, and there's squares, really tight ones, inside of these squares. Well, if I double click the mouse wheel, I'm zooming out to those new limits, and that's more than 12. I'm now, like, I'm not just 12 in the horizontal, I'm 36 in the horizontal. Now I'll pan. Just pan, pushing, holding the mouse wheel, panning to get the UCS icon in plain view, the user coordinate system icon. And when it can, this UCS icon will sit on the red horizontal line and the green vertical line. The, these two lines represent um, the bottom edge of positive model space, the horizontal edge, if you will, that's zero X line and the vertical edge of positive model space are the the um, zero Y line. So it's sort of like if this if AutoCAD were paper, this would be the bottom left corner of the paper. I'm going to paste that uh, that image from the book as a guideline. So it gets cut off a little bit on the top, but this thing is 36 at its widest. It's five at its narrowest, and it starts at zero comma zero. So watch me draw this once, and if it makes sense, then I'll undo it and we can draw it together. If it doesn't make sense, let me know. Again, I'm confirming that ortho mode is on or in its active state. Blue indicates active status, and that ortho is blue. A left click line, and when asked to specify a first point, I'm going to type zero comma zero. So zero comma zero enter. Now I'm pointing up the screen and my first distance is 2.5. I'll type 2.5 and press enter. And my UCS icon is blocking me. I really can't see that line, but I'm going to I'm going to have faith that it worked that I, I created that first section of line. I'll move my crosshairs to the right and when I get to a certain distance from my last point, that rubber band line will start to follow me. If you ever have issues with your rubber band line following you, just move your mouse back towards the end point and then head in your new direction. So I'm moving to the right. I've gone a little more than 36. I don't have to go more than 36. I just have. I'll type in 36 and press enter. Now my, my mouse is already going down screen. I'll type in 5 and hit enter. 
I'll move left. I'll type in 36, enter. I'll move up. Type in 2.5 and hit enter. And then one last time to the right, 36, enter. And I have a habit or a routine of, of observing the line work that I've created. Before I hit escape, I want to look at it and go, hey, does that window look like the window that I pasted as a guideline? If it does, I'll hit escape and I'll be done. Hit escape to cancel. If it doesn't, I'll hit undo on the command line and I'll back up until I find the mistake I, I made. In this case, I lo it looks fine. I'll hit escape. All right, so the sizes are different. This is not to scale the, the pasted image, but this is full size. All right, so that was just uh, nice, Terrence. Um, I'm sort of, I'm just using the capability of the software. I started at 0, 0 as an absolute Cartesian coordinate. And what will happen is when I insert this window into my drawing, where 0, 0 was in this drawing, it'll be, it'll be stuck, my crosshairs will be stuck to that point. It'll be like a grab point, like a grip. So let me erase this. And if you haven't already drawn it with me, if you're, if you're doing the hands-on, we'll do it together. So I've, I've cleared out my drawing. I've, I've changed my limits. I've zoomed to the extents, confirming that ortho is on to keep my line straight vertical, straight horizontal. And then I'll click line. I'll go line. Here, I don't want to left click my start point. I want to type in the coordinate 0, comma, 0, enter. All right. Now my rubber band line is pointing up the screen. If it's not, I'll move my mouse so my, my crosshairs are above my UCS icon. And then I'm going to type in 2.5, enter. And then I'll move to the right. And I'm heading just, I don't even have to go all 36 inches. Just, just go distinctly in the, my desired direction. Type in 36 and hit enter. And I'll come to the end of that line. I'll move down the screen. 5, enter. Left on the screen, 36, enter. I'll come to the end of that line and move up the screen. 2.5, enter. And to the right one last time. 36, enter, and if I'm happy with what I've drawn, if it looks like it's right, I'll hit escape. Nice. Yeah, I know it's, it's tough, Terrence, without having the software. Um, um, you could have downloaded, if you knew this, you could have downloaded a free trial of AutoCAD um, that you could have used to, to practice, but it, it does help, I mean, like just visualizing it um, as you're working with it. So far, so good. Um, Matt, any questions at all? Okay, Terrence, good. So just um, just know, like you'd open up Google and say Auto to Death, AutoCAD 2019 or AutoCAD 2020 or whatever, uh, uh, download AutoCAD. Just make sure that the website you go to is, is an Autodesk website. Like, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, on my other screen I have my Google Chrome up and I'll just go Google and I'll go AutoCAD. You could do the HTTPS. I don't know if it'll be, let's see, I'll go AutoCAD, AutoCAD download. And I'm going to sort of come into this. This is my Google Chrome. This is AutoCAD download. Autodesk.com product design and manufacturer improvement fast include included software. Here's AutoCAD, go to download, like I'm going right to the download. I want, just want to make sure this is Autodesk. You know, there's people out there who, who want to load spyware and all, you know how it is on your computer. Download free trial, this, you, get, you have AutoCAD for 30 days. Um, I've found if you start to, uh, it's, oh yeah, there it is. There's your HTTPS, like you said, uh, Terrence. Um, if I start downloading this, and if, if you've ever downloaded software and you see in the taskbar it says um, one minute to download, or worse yet, it says like one year to download, if, sometimes you see some crazy numbers, just stop the process if it's a crazy um, long pr uh, download process and change browsers. Like I have two or three browsers on my computer. I've got like IE, Internet Explorer, I've got Chrome, I think I've got Firefox somewhere, and it depends on um, 
So that means uh, it's a secure website. Yeah, right, exactly right. When you see that, um, that's, that HTTPS is what, hypertext uh, uh, protocol, something like that, hyperterminal, I used to know what that was. But right, the S is the secure, and, and you can, it, sh it should be a trusted site, and, that, and that's kind of where I'm going with that. And it's, you know, like I said, it's free. Um, it's free for 30 days, and then at, on the 31st day, it's like, hey, do you want to activate your software? And I, I didn't see what the price was, but it, right now you can you can pay for it monthly or yearly or whatever, and it does sort of keep the, um, at first it keeps the price down. And you, you used to be able to buy your AutoCAD, like you'd, AutoCAD was expensive. If you bought full-blown AutoCAD, it might be like $4,500 or something like that. Um, now you can get it for like, a thousand, fifteen hundred, whatever it is, per year. Which you know, the first two years is cheaper than paying outright for it. But at the third year, right, it's it starts to break even. The fourth year, it's, it, but anyways. But you always have access to new software. I'm gonna get rid of this pasted image. Gone, and I'm gonna save this drawing in my class file folder, the same folder I use for my residential, I'll save this as window. So we'll click save, confirming I'm in the same folder as uh, I was earlier, and I'm going to call this window. I see sometimes in class people will be like, oh, this is drawing four. I don't have a drawing four. I'll save this drawing four. Well, it's fine, but it's you know you got to memorize what drawing four is, and then drawing three, and drawing two. So giving it a name that is I don't know if intuitive is the right word, but it, you know like this is a real world object. It's a window. So if I call it window, I can look for window. You know, that whole thing. All right, questions at all. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to come back to the book here. We've been going for about an hour and, and six or seven minutes. We'll go, we'll go a little bit further. Back in the book, um, going to, I'll bring up the PowerPoint again. I will upload this. So we've done this part, drawing with precision, absolute Cartesian coordinate, direct distance entry, create the window. Next we'll do drawing with precision, using existing objects, object snaps, and polar tracking, we'll draw the door. So this will be a little bit different, but first I got to introduce a topic in the book on page 22. Page 22. Page 22 talks about object snaps or drawing with precision using existing objects. And because something like object snap exists in AutoCAD, and it really has ever since I started using AutoCAD, um, it's going to reduce your need to input those coordinates. You're going to be able to snap your line work to existing stuff. Your object snaps are turned on by default and uh, in AutoCAD. I'll show you where they are though and they are set with a, a, a very small number of running object snaps. I'll show you what I mean. In AutoCAD. So on my status bar there's a square with a smaller square in the upper left corner. I'll in my mind, it helps when I do this. If I if I draw, I'm gonna draw with my highlighter. I'll go, you know, like so, like so, like so. That's a a bigger, not better version of that button right there. It's a, what that's supposed to symbolize is. Uh, your object snap is the little square in the upper left corner snapping to a pre-drawn polyline or rectangle or whatever. If I open up this list, this menu, next to object snap, the, there are four running object snaps. Endpoint, center, intersection, and extension. These are all checked on by default, like factory defaults. They're, they're checked on by default. I'm going to click intersection and extension that just turn those two off and then I'll turn on midpoint now you may come to the point where you have a, a lineup of object snaps that you prefer and if you were gonna watch this video and go oh, that's when that, that turkey 
turned on midpoint, I hate midpoint or whatever, you, you'll develop preferences, they may not be anything like mine at all. But we're starting from square one. I've turned on endpoint, midpoint, center. These object snaps will engage when I'm in a command that requ requires, requires point selection, pardon me. So I'm going to use a command called distance. The distance command is on the utilities panel. I'll highlight this too. Again, if this does not help, you should tell me and spare future generations of AutoCAD students from having to look at this awful highlighting. The topmost button, it's like this little ruler. It's a yellow ruler with little graduations on it. That's called distance, and it looks more like a broken flute when I draw it. But the distance tool lets you measure the point between, or me measure the distance between two points. And here's how it works. I'm going to click the ruler icon, left click. Then I'm going to move my draw my crosshairs into my drawing window so I can see the prompt. Specify first point, just like the line command. And I'll hover over this leftmost endpoint of this horizontal line, and you'll see that. If you wait long enough, you'll see it says endpoint. You see a square at the endpoint. You'll see the word endpoint. I'm going to left click. I just captured. I just snapped to that endpoint. Now I'll move right and I'll go all the way to the right endpoint. There's my object snap again. I'm not even all the way to the end, but AutoCAD sees that endpoint. I left click and there's my result. I've got 36.0000 units, in this case inches. So I've drawn the horizontal aspect of this window correctly, if nothing else. So I'll click distance, and again I'll snap to that same point as before, left click, move straight down the screen, left click, and that's five. That's my desired depth or height for that object. I'll go distance one more time from this little drop down menu, Find the midpoint. Midpoint is represented by a, a triangle at the middle of your line. When you see midpoint, you can left click and then move straight down and left click the midpoint there. The result is 2.50000. Perfect. My, my um, window is drawn exactly the right size. In the utility panel, there's a command called you know, the, the expanded utility panel. Many of the panels have the ability to expand, like draw, modify, annotation, layers, block, properties, groups, finally utilities. These all have sort of hidden portions to their panels. In the hidden portion of the utilities panel is a command called ID point. If I left click ID point and just come right to the left endpoint of the middle line, left click, there's the point. If you saw that, I'm at x equals 0, y equals 0, z equals 0. So now not only do I know that my lines are the right length, right height, they're in the right place. So that object snap allowed me to anchor my line work to some predefined places. And if I needed to draw more stuff, I'm not like if I wanted to draw more line work, I could go line, left click this window, let's say this window has a one inch windowsill. I'll go one, enter, and go left, 36, enter, come back down and left click the endpoint. And I'll do the same thing on the bottom, line, left click the endpoint, down the screen, one, enter, right, 36, enter, and I'll left click that final endpoint. I'm gonna take, take that away because now it's getting confusing. There's so many stinking lines there, but, but I just wanted you to see how you can draw now that that's much more simple. So your object snaps allow you to snap to existing objects, either snap measurement tools or snap new line work. Okay, questions on any of that, questions at all? Okay, cool. All right, so when we come back, we'll take a break. Let's call it two, it's almost 2.20. We'll take a, a 15 minute break and we come back, we'll talk about a tool called Object Snap. We'll draw the door and that'll be the last um, new drawing that we create today, but we'll work in an, an existing drawing. 
and uh, so forth. So let me do this. I'm going to bring up the PowerPoint. All right, so we've done half of this session right here, day one, part three. Um, we'll do the second half when we come back in 15 minutes. So I'll start the timer, and you can stretch your legs, get some refreshment, and we'll start back in 15 minutes. All right, here we go. Starting the timer.